Hello, everybody. Uh, we will be starting momentarily. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes to begin um, so that more people can uh, join the webinar. Okay, so before I begin, I just wanna make sure that everyone can hear me and see my screen. Um, on the right-hand side of your screen, you should see GoToWebinar control panel. If uh, someone could, or if you, if you can hear me, if you could write into the questions area or the chat box that you can hear my audio, that would be great. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for everyone letting me know that you can hear me. Um, then I'll get started. So welcome to the first webinar for Richling Gives 2019. Whoops. My name is Lisa and I am the Community Engagement Manager at Mighty Cause. We're also here with Mora from Richling County Foundation. Um, we'll be going over uh, general information about the platform, some refresher information for organizations that have participated last year or years previous, and it'll also be an introduction for organizations um, if this is your first year participating in Richling Gives. At the end, we'll be answering any questions you have, so you can utilize also the GoToWebinar control panel to ask your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll be answering at the end. So for those of you who it's your first year participating in Richland Gives, Mighty Cause is the platform provider of Richland Gives. We've uh, have been in business since 2006 and we're one of the pioneers in the giving day uh, area and industry. We're one of the all just all we're one of the oldest um, giving day and largest giving day providers. We've helped raise over $600 million for over 30,000 nonprofits, and some of them are right here in this webinar, so Richland County organizations. So a refresher also on the event, Richland Gives will be on December 3rd. Third, it will be hosted, of course, by Richland County Foundation. Uh, it will end at 7 p.m. on December 3rd. And of course, the event is made to help increase uh, in capacity and uh, acquire new supporters for Richland County organizations. Great, so let's get started and review some um, background technical information on to about the platform. So first, if you haven't already done so, please make sure that you are registered for the event. Um, approval for the event will take um, a short amount of time. Uh, the deadline to register is October 31st, so you still have some time, but obviously the earlier the better. And a refresher and reminder for organizations that have used the platform before, you can always add and remove administrators on your page. So if you want to remove an old administrator, you can do so. If you want to add anyone new to your organization, you can do so as well. And we'll go over in more detail about how you can add administrators. Great. So something you may notice on your organization page is that the dashboard has been updated some um, somewhat. We've changed the name and try to just make sure that it's more streamlined for organizations. Um, nothing drastic has changed, but uh, we just try to make it much easier for nonprofits. So the dashboard is divided up into a couple of key sections that we'll be going into more in detail in a second. The top is the home area, which will show you all of your key metrics and as well as a to-do list that will help guide you to build your page if you are new. 
The profile section, which is the second um, icon you see on your dashboard, will allow you to customize and edit your page, add brand colors, of images, etc. Reports will provide you access to all of your donor information, and as well will provide you information on offline donations, recurring donations, we've added a donor retention report, and disbursement reports. Fundraising will provide you all of the tools you need to manage your fundraising efforts. Uh, you'll find the donor experience tool there. You'll find the ability to review any fundraising pages that have been created for your organization, as well as the ability to add matching grants. And lastly, settings. Settings will provide you some key management tools that you need in order to manage your nonprofit on the platform. So the first thing that you want to think about as you're revisiting your page or you're looking at your page for the first time is uh, customizing your profile page because your profile page will be the main link that you're going to send supporters. Um, and as well, if you do utilize a fundraising page on the platform, your organization profile page is directly linked on there so donors and supporters can easily access it. For organizations that have participated in Richland Gives previously, you want to think about what powerful story you can tell this year that's different than last year. Revisit what you wrote and see what are some new changes that you, your organization has gone through in that year. What updates can you provide to donors? What's a new story that you can tell to motivate donors to donate this year? Editing your theme is really important uh, piece of the puzzle because it provides donors the opportunity to immediately notice your page and as well make sure that the branding on your website and anywhere else matches your organization page. From your page editor, you can upload a logo and a background image that will allow your page to pop. And as well, choose a filter color to edit that background image and set a theme color for your overall page. So what the color is when someone clicks donate. And this theme color will also populate to any fundraising pages. So if you as well plan to utilize a campaign page for your event, your theme color will still be on that page if you edit it through your organization page. As I mentioned, the description uh, is a really essential part to your campaign. What's the story that you're going to tell donors this year? The inline text editor will allow you to format your story in different ways and also allowed you to add images or videos. On your organization profile page, you'll also have access to a custom tab. If there is any additional information you want to share, for example, if you have volunteer opportunities, events, you want to create your own image gallery, et cetera, whatever you want that to be, you can create your own tab that provides that information separate to your description and your story. Below the description area, you'll see the ability to import photos in the media gallery as well as connect your organization page to your organization's Facebook or Instagram photo gallery. If you haven't done so already, this is a great opportunity to sync those media accounts because it's an easy way to keep the content on your page fresh and new without having to manually go in and do that. As well, we'll talk about that more when we get to the settings section, but you'll also have the opportunity to edit your social share settings. What that means is that what do donors see when they post a link to your organization page or your fundraising page on Facebook or Twitter, et cetera? What is the image or the description that pops up right there? That's something that you'll be able to edit. As well, if you are a returning organization, what you want to make sure to do is reset your metrics. So this can be found on profile as well, but instead of page editor, it's in the next section called page settings. At the top of page settings, you'll see a metrics area, and this metrics allows you to add a thermometer onto your organization page. If you used one last year, 
you'll want to make sure that you update the date that that metrics thermometer calculates from. So if it's set to 2018, you want to make sure that it's set to 2019 so that it's only counting donations that you've collected this year. All right, let's move down to the next section on the dashboard, the reports area. As I mentioned, in the reports area, you'll have access to all of your donor information through the donations report. If you are set up as an administrator to your organization, you'll receive email notifications letting you know that a donation has been made to your organization. Within your donations report, you can also review all of that information in real time. It'll provide you the name of the donor, the amount, their contact information, as well as the page associated to the donation that they made. You can resend donation receipts through this area, and you can export all of that information into an Excel sheet. In particular, if you are choosing to collect additional data information, such as addresses or phone numbers, all of that information will be available in the downloadable donations report. Within the report section, as well on your dashboard, you'll have access to a disbursement report. This disbursement report will provide you information on all the disbursements that we've sent out to your organization. If you have set up EFT or electronic tra tra transfer funds, uh, you will receive funds twice a month and donations are batched by calendar month and redisbursed to your organization. We will also email organizations once we have sent out a disbursement to them. So you will have a link to the disbursement report in those notifications as well. Within the reports area, we've also added a new section specifically for offline gifts. So you can manage your offline gifts completely separately and in a really easy and manageable way. Similar to last year, you can add offline gifts for your organization during the event. But what we've also added is the ability to include additional information. So if you wanna add the donor's email address, if you wanna select what type of offline gift that is, for example, was it a check or cash donation, you can add that information here and keep track of how many cash donations you've received, how many check donations you've received, et cetera. Please note that your offline donations can count toward your metrics totals on your organization page, so that thermometer. However, offline gifts do not count for leaderboard totals. So as you are looking at the leaderboard during the event, your offline gifts will not be included there. An exciting section that we've added to the reports area is a donor retention report. And this is a great section that you can utilize during and before the event. The donor retention report will allow you to keep track of donators who donated last year, but perhaps haven't donated this year to your event. So you can easily see the percentage and amount of dollars that you've retained from last year's event to this year's event. We will provide you the exact donors and we'll also provide you their email address. So if you want to send them a quick email reminding them of the event and that they donated last year and to continue help supporting your organization, all of that is available in your donor retention report area. Moving down to the next section of the left-hand side dashboard, fundraising. So donor experience within the fundraising section allows you to customize the checkout flow of your organization page or your donation page. You can add in custom donation levels as well as add descriptions. And adding a description is a great way to show organizations the impact their donation has. So if that's not something that you've utilized previously last year, you may wanna think about and see what kind of descriptions you can add to your donations to show that impact. As well within this area, you can opt into collecting certain data information, as I mentioned previously, such as address or phone number. And please note, if you do opt into collecting address or phone number information, the address field will be required field. It will be automatically uh, taken from all donations, but the phone number field will only be an optional field for donors to fill out. 
and you can always preview your checkout flow through the donor experience area or you can simply go back into your organization page and go through the donation process. On the right hand side of the donor experience section is the post checkout area. This post checkout area will allow you to add in a thank you message and custom thank you message in your donation receipt. The thank you page is the first page that pops up when a donor completes their transaction. So it's a great opportunity to share any ad additional information you want to share with donors. Perhaps you wanna add a CTA link that uh, sends donors to a certain area of your website that directs them to subscribe to a newsletter or an email list that you have. You can add photos and images on your thank you page. And if this is something that you've utilized last year, please make sure to revisit this section and make sure that all of that information that you've added last year is up to date and correct. Below the thank you page is where you can add that custom thank you message on your donation receipt. Once a donation is processed, we will send the donor a receipt to their email address. And if you would like to add a specific message onto that email, a thank you to them, again, if you wanna direct them to your website or whatever um, you want to state, you can add that here. And of course, you can preview both options so you exactly see what donors will be seeing or receiving um, when once they make a donation. If we're moving down on the fundraising area of your dashboard, the next section is matching grants. This is also a tool that we updated since last year. The matching grants tool allows you to add and advertise a match onto your organization page or fundraising page. What's great about this year is that we've updated the tool to include different matches. So previously you had the opportunity to do dollar for dollar, but if this year you want to do a cumulative match, for example, if you want to set it that um, the match is completed whenever you receive the first 10 donations, you can set the type of match onto your page. The match does not need to be paid through the platform. Um, if the grantor would like to play, pay offline from the platform, that's perfectly okay and fine. But please know again that the that match amount will not be included in your leaderboard totals. So if you would like that match total to be included in your leaderboard totals, you'll want the match to be paid through the platform. Um, and lastly, you can always go back and edit your match as well. If you wanna backdate the match, uh, if you need to edit certain areas of the match, you can always go back and do so. And one of the most important updates that we've also added to the matching grant tool is the ability to include offline donations towards a match. So if you've added a $20 cash offline donation to your organization page, you can set your matching grant to include that offline gift. So the donors are seeing the actual amount that is left for that match based off online or offline donations. Great. Now we're on the last section of the left-hand side dashboard, which is settings. Within the settings area, we've actually divided up the settings into really key, two key areas, which is organization settings and admins. So the organization settings allows you to customize your URL and your social sharing settings, like I mentioned in the beginning. This will also be the area where you can update your legal mailing address and set up or edit your direct deposit EFT information. The admin section allows you to edit or add admins. So if you simply go into the admin section, you can add an admin by selecting add new admin or remove an admin by selecting the gray X that appears next to the admin's name. So that was some technical and refresher information about the platform to give you an idea and information onto all of the updates that we've created on there. Now we're gonna go into some information about donor engagement and some strategies that you guys can implement this year. We'll be having another webinar to go over in more detail some of this information, but just a, again, quick refresher on some of this. So if you haven't checked out the toolkit yet, there is a toolkit available for nonprofits on the Richland Gives website. There's a lot of great tips, 
uh, FAQs, how to's, templates, etc. We try to provide as much information as possible for organizations so that you feel ready and prepared to begin sending out emails, reaching out to donors, um, and feeling like that you have a great strategy in place before the event. Early donations starts November 1st. So as you are looking through the toolkit and you're designing your plate page, please keep in mind that you can start um, accepting donations starting November 1st. So um, that's a great way to, when you're thinking about your email marketing strategy, to keep that in mind and to make sure to remind donors that they can actually donate early for the event. You can review all of your do donations, as I mentioned, through the reports and donation, uh, all donations area of your left-hand side dashboard. And starting November 1st, any donations that are made will be processed and will show up on the leaderboard on the day of the event. And it's a great opportunity to begin reminding people to donate, as we all know, know that sometimes it takes donors a couple of times <laughs> to be reminded to donate. So this gives you some great leeway um, in order to reach out and um, you know, remind donors to donate. And this is also a great opportunity to reference that donor retention report that I showed you a couple of slides back. You know, as the event progresses, you can always go back into your donor retention report and see how many of your donors last year have gone back and already started donating this year. Promoting your matching grant. So what is so great and enticing about a matching grant is that is that it motivates donors to actually donate and perhaps donate a larger amount that they would have previously. So as you are thinking again about your email marketing strategy, you want to make sure that you are sharing this with donors and that you're also recognizing um, to donors the importance and urgency of a matching grant and um, that what the match how the impact of the match and what it can do. You can share the progress of the match on social media. So you can share with them live how much you have left of the match. Perhaps you only have $100 left. It's a great way to share with donors, you know, how, they, again, they can make an impact towards your organization. And of course, you want to make sure that you're activating and engaging supporters and your network. Uh, you know, one of the great aspects of the nonprofit community is that there are lots of individuals in your network that have a whole slew of skills that you may not be accessing yet. It yet. So outsource all of the responsibilities or all of the jobs that you really need help for during the event. Perhaps uh, one of your board members or you know a supporter of your organization has really great social media strategies or tips or is really great on social media. Use that ear to your advantage and as and as well allow your supporters to tell their story about your organization uh, because there is a reason why they're connected to your organization and their stories are going to be the most powerful way to motivate donors to donate to your organization. To how do you activate and engage your ambassadors? So first, you want to make sure that you're actively reaching out and to donors that have donated last year, the last donor that you've received, so that you can create that connection and, and utilize it. As I mentioned, personal impact stories are really essential for sharing your story and motivating donors to make a donation. And it's also a great opportunity to share with individuals of how they can engage and how they can support your organization in a different way other than just making a donation. As I as well mentioned previously, the donor retention report can be a really easy way for you to review the donors that have donated last year but haven't donated this year again. Review your donor retention report right when early donations start and keep track of it throughout your, uh, your event. 
And you can always also download a list of Richland Gives donors from last year from your donations report as well. If a donor is already planning on making a donation again, work to see if they can increase their gift from last year or reach out and see if they're willing to be a grantor. Again, a matching grant doesn't have to be a large amount like $1,000 or $2,000. A matching grant can be as small as $100. And most importantly, make sure to spread the word. So share the, your event page or your organization page on social media, through newsletters, through your website, et cetera. And make sure that as you're reaching out to donors that you're reaching out and segmenting your communications by donor group. So all of your recurring donors, all of the donors that donated this year, this year and last year, and you wanna set up a plan in advance. It's going to be more hectic as the event comes around the corner. So you wanna make sure all of that is good to go and ready and that you feel prepared when the event actually happens on December 3rd. And last, but and certainly um, the most important part of this is that if you have any questions uh, or need any assistance, our support team is available for you and we're here and happy to help. If you have any questions, feel free to email support at mightycause.com. Our support hours are from Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our phone number is 202-800-1618. And as well, we do have a support forum. So if you have any questions that you want to quickly get answered, um, you can always go through our support articles um, and try to find your answer through there. That is the end of this webinar. Uh, please note that we will all be sharing this webinar on the toolkit after we are finished, as well as providing a PDF of it on there as well. So you can always review the slides. Uh, but I'll go to the questions control panel. Uh, and if anyone has any questions about any of the tools that we've talked about, uh, please feel free to use the control panel um, and we can go through any questions through there. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other questions. So um, as I mentioned, I'll be sharing this on the toolkit on the Richland Gives website. And if you have any other additional questions, please feel free to reach out to support at mightycause.com. Okay, thank you everyone and have a great day.